Hey, thanks for coming back, my friends. Today we're going to look especially and specifically at this moon uh, entity that it, it looks to be swimming or flapping its wings. It actually looks to be like a stingray. This was captured with a P900 uh, from a YouTube channel called Boogeyman. And we're going to get talking about that. But just the other day, my wife and I were having dinner, right? And oftentimes when we sit and we have dinner we like to just talk about things that are going on and i like to ask some questions because she's the one that goes out she does all the shopping and uh, i i tend to stay home almost always because i'm the kind of guy that refuses to wear a mask so i'm basically on house arrest so i said have you noticed that the store shelves have been missing anything is is anything odd and she said well one thing that is definitely in short supply are sanitizers some paper products things of that sort and that i actually wasn't too surprised by and then i said well what about other items uh staple items such as uh foods and meats and whatnot and then she replied and said yes well i did have noticed that the uh meats uh the prices have not only skyrocketed the selection is uh much less and the quality of meat is is just not there uh, so that's one thing that she also noticed and one other thing that she mentioned that I found to be quite odd was that she said the frozen food section is almost emptied out like the hungry man dinners and whatnot now that's not something that we eat regardless but I kind of pondered on that and I was like she's and she said you know that's strange because usually that section is packed and then it clicked to me and I said well people that uh, are trying to gather some extra supplies that maybe they're grabbing frozen foods I don't know but that makes sense to me but she did say one good thing is that there still are plenty of canned goods available so please we need to at least get yourselves prepared with for food shortages that will be coming lastly now and I actually do feel that this is by design it's all part of the takedown of the entire global economy and to cause utter chaos in the months to come as dr bright had stated we are possibly facing the darkest winter in modern history now there's a certain medication i take that i've been on for uh, about 12 years now and it's not a medication that you can just suddenly stop there was never a problem getting this medication before but i could not get it filled when it was due and the far I spoke to two separate pharmacists and I asked them straight up I said are we looking at medication shortages and he said sir I'm afraid so because the medication that uh, was to be filled was looking out till November that they would have it so it was a situation where I had to go back and forth with the doctor so they could change the prescription and it was a nightmare so guys if you're if you have family members or you yourselves are on medications you may want to start to put some aside for uh, the scenario when disruptions start to occur all right now we're gonna switch gears here this was captured with a p900 by a channel called boogeyman now he uh, just picked up his p900 and using a telescopic lens and he was wondering what in the world were these things flying around in between the earth and the moon and he came to the conclusion that it looked like they were swimming and i agree but you could see them actually flapping now that's zoomed in tight when you're zoomed in that tight to see flapping wings and a, a tail like a stinger is just simply amazing so i'm not the only one picking up these winged entities now i want to take a look at sydney australia here because they're getting hit with the new world order i'd also say this the other area of uh, danger uh, is the place that we would normally consider to be the safest place on earth our homes the place that we would normally consider to be the safest place on earth our homes uh, you've already heard today that uh, one of uh, or a number of the people who've actually uh, uh, now got the virus got it in a home situation and we'll hear more detail about that in due course but it is uh, both a safe place and a dangerous place we must treat this uh, new world order we must treat this uh, new world order we must treat this uh, new world order new, this new world of covid we must treat this new world of covid even in our own homes even in our own homes now we're going to get back to those winged entities that look like stingrays with a tail but 
Boy, Australia is getting hit hard and fast with the New World Order, and it's almost as if they're the training ground, so that they can get that right, and then that's going to spread across the Western world along with the UK and all that, because places like China, Sweden, uh, India, these sorts of countries, they're already on board with the New World Order. They don't have to go through that much change. Now let's have a look at the footage that I captured that I did in my previous video called The Pit. This is a winged entity that could not be made any more clear. It is massive, utterly massive in the sky. And we can now watch as these things start to fly. There's one right there. You could see its shape. It has wings. And as it continues on, you could see them popping through the ionized plasma field as they continue to fly and be set free from their spiritual hive as you see when popping through the ionized plasma field which is a cloud formation now this mother one that came from the top flew around let's watch it fly again and you see it boom come around that thing is massive these things are cloaked with ai holographic technology let's have a look briefly at what i captured at night this would be actually one of those entities and this is what is called a moon simulator and i have a compilation at the end now look at this winged entity that i call the locust from the pit that is flying directly towards that perceived moon it could not be made any more clear that has wings and you could see it as it orbits and comes right back around as we begin to enlarge it and you can see it flying directly towards it that entity is large and in charge and quite disturbing to be quite honest with you guys here it is when they arc out the energy field that comes off of these celestial objects they somehow uh, transfer energy into the plasma field for these dark matter entities and it hyper excites them and I have a theory that it actually feeds them now let's look at this plasma channel weapon from China roughly uh, late August this took place they said this was a lightning strike this was no lightning strike whatsoever this is what's called a directed energy plasma channel weapon or the military's lightning weapon, which we're about to look at right here. The United States Army, this was a success, successful test done in 2005. And the electrical current will then lock onto anything that conducts electricity better than the surrounding air, like the chassis of a vehicle or the tooth filling of a terrace, then make it melt or explode promptly. And that's exactly what we're looking at. And there you can see the demonstration, how it locks on to the car bumper there. And that would then blow that car up or melt it. The engineers say the weapon isn't ready to be used in the field yet. The engineers say the weapon isn't ready to be used in the field yet. Now, I don't know, does that look like a typical lightning strike? That looks like a directed energy plasma weapon. As you can see, the plasma pool on the ground. That's just insane. Another angle? Wow. So, yes, these are silent weapons for a silent war. Uh, I firmly believe World War III is well underway. Through the weather weapons, there's another angle, and that is definitely what looks to be that same plasma channel weapon that is no lightning strike whatsoever that is directed energy and a powerful directed energy beam at that let's look again at another angle right here you could see the plasma field the actual liquid on the ground the liquid plasma on the ground as it cools off that's just insane crazy they call that a lightning strike but let's lose our, use our common sense here or let's not lose our common sense now this is from september 19th of 2005 this is the successful weapons test by the u.s uh, army uh, back in 2005 the plasma channel weapon and boy that certainly looks familiar right there that would be considered what's called 
the lightning weapon that locks on to the path of least resistance and in this case it happened to be that sky rise building now let's listen to a brief segment here on this uh, really good video proving the sun and moon are fixed. The sun simulator is probably the easiest thing to prove that it exists. It's probably the most obvious thing to prove it exists. But what's most obvious and should be without question easiest to prove. Well, have, did you realize that they said they went to the moon Several times, in fact. But just recently, they admitted that they've never been to the moon. But even Elon Musk has said they've opened a door, a portal, to a dimension that they cannot close. It's too late. They've allowed the AI demonic entities to take over, and they can't stop it. Those aren't my words. Those are his. AI is literally taking over, and it can't be stopped. Yes, it can't be stopped, except through our Messiah. Look at that entity flying across. It's winged, as I captured one right here on the tw evening of the 27th. Look at the size of that thing. The only difference is the other one is further out. Now, this one here, you can see the electrical field coming off of that, that perceived moon. And then you could see that giant bird-like entity flying down. As we look here at the P900, they look to be swimming across. And these are so, uh, so close to the moon. It's just incredible. And look at them go. It's as if they are swimming. And you could even see them flapping their wings. Now, I will leave this man's uh, link in the description box. And we're going to listen to what he has to say I right now. I believe these things are swimming more than flying, okay? And if you watch them closely, and I've slowed them down and I've zoomed them in, um, you're going to agree, I believe. I really do. I truly, truly do. The contrast, the colors, it is very easy to spot these transits, okay? Now, like I said, a lot of them look like birds, even though, even though from a, phot a photography standpoint, these birds, quote unquote, are in focus with the moon itself. All I know is, when I watch these beings cross the moon, transit the moon, they don't look like they're flapping their wings. They look like more like stingrays. They don't look like they're flapping their wings. They look like more like stingrays. Uh, they look like they're sort of f flowing. Flowing, if you will. Flowing, um with their wings right and their tails hanging out my 2x telephoto converter gets too close uh if that's possible it gets too close and it gets too personal and it makes it hard to see well they're amazing to look at um they're amazing to uh you know gather but really hard to swallow uh look at this little guy right here now, this is one of them that I'm sure that is too small to pick up from Earth, right? Doesn't matter, day or night, too small to pick up from Earth. He is definitely on the moon, all right? I mean, just look at it. It almost looks like it's flapping, but it almost looks like it's aquatic. A, a lot like a stingray. So he's calling them stingrays. I'm calling them the locust from the pit. Either way, nobody has an explanation for this, so I'll leave his link in the box, uh, and we're going to finish this out with the compilation on the sun simulators. You guys have a wonderful and blessed night. Look forward to talking to you soon. Take care. I kind of compared it to the sun simulator because it does have similarities. But either way, it's, it's kind of neat. Don't know what it is, but it does have an uncanny resemblance to the sun simulator. Are you seeing that cube? 
Do you see that? Right in the middle of the sun. And of course, that's some sort of camera malfunction or whatever to the effect. The problem is, he was only able to capture this on certain days in June and July. And then again, last week, it came back. Other than that, he couldn't capture it at all. But look at this. Not only did he catch it again, but he caught it reflecting in the water as well. I've never seen this before, and I'm going to say you probably haven't either in the water but he also catches it in the sky simultaneously it's because they're they work for you know alphabet agencies trying to make you look bad trying to discredit you so no one listens and no one gets on your bandwagon look at this look at the shape of this that is so unnatural watch as we get a little further into the video Watch, watch the shape of this thing. This, this thing, it changes shape while I'm videotaping it. Meaning they're adjusting it. It just rose. It just rose. It's only been in the air for about 20 minutes. So it, every time it, it makes landfall over the oceans, you know, they don't care over the oceans. There's not many people seeing it. But as it makes landfall, they have to do adjustments. The sun simulator is, and it just it all looks fake. That looks like CGI, man. And this is live video. This is I, I shot this this morning. Isn't this crazy looking? Look at this. Look at this. If that is not a simulated light source, I don't know what is. Look at the center of it now. It's still blue, but it looks because of the angle I'm at. I'm at a really high altitude. Um, you're seeing like a like a spinning. So that tells me that there is no light in the center of this device and that the center is some type of nucleus, maybe the power source. I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process on this one. Um, we've all seen, most of us have seen this little black dot in the sun before. Okay, I'm going to pause it right there. As you can see, it's got two. It's got two black dots. So what I did was I took a snapshot of this and I did some photo analysis with it. But let's take a look at what, what these things look like when they ran through the photo forensics. Okay, as you can see, um, there's my, there's the two dots and I'm doing my photo forensics here. So here's what I did. I took that snapshot and I enlarged it. Now look at this. And when I hover my little mousy over it, it actually takes on a 3D effect. Look at that. I mean, you can see it all. Let's go down here so I can point it. I mean, it's like a 3D. Okay, well, here's a little bit of a different perspective. Okay. Um, I changed the colors from that to this. And I tried playing with the colors, but there is no color. Now, you can clearly see uh, a solar simulator patented back in April of 1966. And we're going to go over to here and we're going to look at uh, this patent and bring it up to size. And if you'll notice, you'll see in here, here's these stanchions or supporting bars, which possibly could be uh, what we're seeing actually in the video that was done by Patty Daly. Um, and, and, and her forensics uh, investigation. See the pipes going across here? Let's take a look at that again and see how that matches up. Okay, this is the black dot in front of the sun. What do you think that is? I think that's a device. I mean, you can actually see shadows. You can see the 3D effect on this. So just putting in Cube Satellite Patent Sun Simulator. Look at all the patents on Sun Simulators and CubeSats that there is just doing a quick search. This has been going on like since the 1960s before. Boeing Sun Simulators. Why do we need a Sun Simulator? Sun Simulators in Germany. And on it goes. Okay, so here we have uh, just a kind of a Bobo picture of the Sun Simulator. Okay, so here we have our sun. 
this is the the device manufactured by Bausch and Lohm and Lockheed Martin. So basically, what it does is takes our sun that has moved far away from the orbit, where the sun's rays and heat no longer give valuable, you know, stuff towards the Earth, as it's moved far away outside an elliptical orbit. Who knows? Or maybe another planet has passed in front of it and stole its thunder. Who knows the reason why they would put up a sun simulator. But everyone's noticing that what's in the sky right now isn't the same as the yellow sun you remember. It burns white. It burns hotter. And no one wants to go out in the sun anymore. How it's not torching all the plant life yet is beyond me. Maybe they're spraying something within the chemtrails that's keeping the plants alive. So anyway, this is the sun. This is the, the sun's rays projecting into this like cathode ray tube. Well, it has this receiver here and this cathode ray tube that projects, uh, enhances the sun's rays and projects them on like people think it's a spinning glass uh, center. Some people say it's round. Some people say it's square. I think that's when sometimes with certain cameras, when you point the, the, the camera at the, what we think is the sun, you're getting this outside lens array, but sometimes you get that black center and sometimes it looks like it's spinning. I think that's what that is right there. It's basically the mirror that reflects the cathode rays tubes and then spins them in a high speed rate. So it's sending pulsated rays across this lens array. It's sending pulsated rays across this lens array and then it projects down to the earth and looks like a sun. Now what I'm about to show you is a sunset video taken at about 500 feet with my drone. I think I get a reflection of this, the cathode ray. Okay? Here we go. It blasts rays through a funneled tube to enhance the power. It's called a cathode ray tube or trigger. And that is exactly what the sun simulator is, just at a larger scale. Okay, so I think by now you guys have probably seen the green funneled lens flare. Totally bizarre. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day.